Uh, Rabbi, okay, we'll go ahead and get this next caller. Caller, thank you for tuning in. Please state your name and where you're calling from. Uh, Avi. Oh, Avi. Hey, Avi. How are you? What is the question for Rabbi? Okay, so um, Judaism totally uh, rejects the idea of God becoming a man, and Christians argue that if God is God, um, like, and He can do anything, <laughs> is yeah. it like uh, holding Him back and saying He cannot become a man? Can He be God? In the same uh, like attitude where people say like, if God makes a boulder bigger than Himself, then He can't be God. And so, what in the Tanakh? What does it mean? truly uh when it says god god can't become a man okay so i want to ask you a question see th there is a fallacy in this it's but it's a, it's a word game meaning becoming a man sounds like it's an ability it's a good thing like i can be a man so it's like one of the things i can do Okay, that makes sense? So we're saying he can't, so that means God is restricted. Do you see what I'm saying? So they're saying God can't be restricted. Do you get that point? Yeah. Okay. Now think let me so let me explain to you. Becoming a man, that means he's now a man, that actually is not a positive thing, it's a negative thing. Let me ask you a question. Could God be stupid? No. What do you mean, no? He can do anything. What can God do? He can't be stupid? Why can't he be stupid? Because it's the word stupid sounds like it's a something. I'm stupid. Aha, not only can I this, but I'm stupid too, you know? So the answer is, it's a word game. Stupid means the absence of of intelligence. <laughs> so it's like with God. So could God create a stone that he can't lift? As though creating such a stone means that he could do anything. But it means that God is weak. So these are fallacies. They're, they're just playing games. And this is, this is cute when you're in, you know, when you're in nursery school. But in the real world, when you understand that there are some concepts that are negatives, not positives, uh, meaning that means God is, in fact, as King Solomon said, because in the same chapter, in, in 1 Kings chapter 8, uh, so King Solomon built a temple for as a house of God, but King Solomon said very clearly, he said, I think in verse 27, he says, how could this house, this, the whole world cannot contain you. How could this house contain you? Now, I'm not going to go into why it's important to build a temple. That's not germane to this particular issue. But King Solomon says that this whole house can contain you. So does that mean God can't become something that can fit? He's not able to? The answer is, of course not. God is ein od. He shochein ad. Isaiah 57 verse 15. He has no limit. And therefore, any other thing, anything else, is a limitation. That's one. So therefore, this is a silly word game. That's all it is. Like, could God be an idiot? <laughs> no. But the, oh, he can do something. Well, I need a God who can be an idiot. Well, that's not a positive thing. You know, so I, I've just, you know, approached this, you know, linguistically, that there are words that are in in the affirmative like stupid i am stupid so therefore it's like or oh i have stupidity or i like use stupidity so that means like stupidity is something to have no stupidity means the absence of wisdom the absence of understanding it's really a negative it's just the language is it's 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 it doesn't require not intelligent you just say stupid and that means not intelligent that's all this this is uh that's all that's going on in god creates stone he can't care because god because every god can created the whole world by just uttering a word but the other point is that the tanakh says openly i mean you have to understand that a relation with God was not only reserved, not reserved for scholars and, and geniuses and so on, and it's, it's available to everybody. You know, that's why Biblical Hebrew is so easy. I mean, it's really so, it's so delicious. You know, in our congregation, we, we study solid five hours every Shabbos together. 
I don't know many congregations that the rabbi studies with his congregation five hours straight on Shabbos. And they all have a Tanakh in front of them, and we read it in the Hebrew. And one of the things they notice is that it's a very small, very precise language. And it flows easy, and he, you know, unlike English, with all kinds of exceptions, and this is an exception to rule, and that's an exception, and this is an The Hebrew really doesn't have all these, it's just very straightforward. You look at a word in Hebrew, you, you, I mean, there's rare exceptions. You know exactly how to read it. You know, they're just, it's just very straightforward. Why? It was, it's for, it was a language made for men, not for some, some PhD guy from Harvard who could understand Stan Jacobi in English. So therefore, it, the Torah says, look, let me just clear this up for you so there's no, there can be mis no mistake here. Numbers 23, verse 19. God is not a man. Okay, so let's clear the air right there. Therefore, he will not lie. He's not, he's not a mortal. He will not change his mind. Period. End. Why would King Solomon say that this house cannot contain you? The whole world can't contain you. What do you mean it can't contain you? If God could be a man, then it can contain him very easily. In fact, according to the Gospels, Jesus went into the temple, so it did contain him. So what is Solomon even talking about? It's all, it is such object nonsense. Please read 1 Samuel 15, verse 29. Read it. I don't care what Bible you read. Netzach Yisrael lo yishaker, the, um, the strength of Israel does not lie. Ki lo yodam hu, because he is not a man. Well, what do you want to do? Why would you want to live there? Wouldn't you want to be in love with the true God of Israel? Don't you want a pure kiss? Yishokeni min shiko ispiyu, ki toivim doidechu miyoyin. Kiss me with the kisses of your lips, for your love is better than wine. What, what is this kiss on the lips like? Why is this necessary? You know, kiss me with the kisses of your ear. Why is lips? Because this is where God kissed us the first time. How did we become human and selam alikim, create the image of God? In which place did God blow a ruach, a wind, a spirit of God inside of us, right in here, right here, right here. This is where the wind went in, and therefore we want to keep that spirit going, keep it going in here. This is why people who love each other kiss each other on the lips. They want to feel their essence. So therefore, what do you, why, does, why does a person want iniquity and sin and fornication, spiritual fornication in their lives? When, it, it, when a personal relationship with God is so accessible to each and every one of us.